Hello and welcome to our international free webinar. This is Uma Salma, core volunteer and head of campus ambassador in IGP. Thank you all for joining with us in this wonderful evening. Now, before starting our program, let me tell you about IGP. Institute of Global Professionals is an educational institution, provides social work, and spreading knowledge is important for IGP. We organize our webinar training, online offline courses, extra by best and trained speaker course from all over the world, create a best learning platform to you all. Our mission is to empower people and enhance skills. So let's start our program with IGP's mantra, feed your skill. Today, our 89 webinar topic on multidisciplinary research and teaching part one, organized with honorable press speaker, Dr. Abdul Ghafur Marzuki, Puthu Vidi Iswari, and Dr. Mulwadi, and they all are from Indonesia. Now we are moving to our first speaker. I would like to introduce our first speaker. He is a senior lecturer of English language teaching and learning program of IAIN Madura. He has experienced 20 years as lecturer, the position that ever reached by him as a head of English department, head of language center, secretary of Research Institute and Community Service, and as the secretary of Quality Assurance Department. He is also reviewed in several journals in Indonesia. His writing already is published in the form of books and also journal article in research base. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Mulwadi, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Good evening, Ms. Alma. Good evening, sir. Now, sir, uh, it's still over to you. Okay, so uh, can I start the presentation right now? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Alma. Well, in this occasion, I'd like to present some uh, the basic idea on the globalization. Here we go. I would like to discuss and present the local language against global language. This topic is rooted from the basic theme or the basic hello sir. Uh, hello, sir. hello sir sorry for interrupt maybe you stopped your share mm -hmm. share your screen sir you already stopped it Okay, here we go. Can you see the slides? Yes. No, sir. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir, but I can't see your slide. Share your screen as like as previous. I, I read it. Okay, let me repeat it. No, sir, <laughs> you, have to, you have to share it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, now open your yeah. yeah, just minimize the tab. Uh, minimize the tab. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me start from the beginning of the, the presentation. I will talk about and share the ideas about the local language against global language. Of course, this is uh, when we talk about lang uh, local language, it is from Indonesian context because I am from Indonesia. The situation and the condition of the local language, uh, which is under attack or under a threat of global language. In this case, what I mean with the global language is uh, English as one of the major language in uh, Indonesia. It is taught officially in Indonesian uh, country. Well, let me describe some background about uh, the, the, the central idea of the presentation. Well, talking about uh, globalization in general, it is sometimes like a threat to a local tradition, local culture and local wisdom. And when, as we talk about a local tradition or local culture and local wisdom, 
it is uh, including language in it language in it uh, what i mean with the local tradition it also covers um, you know uh, local food in indonesia which is under a threat uh, of uh, global food like mcdonald or pizza Hut, and also become a threat for a local culture a local tradition therefore global languages as one of the products of globalization intensely becomes a threat again against local language. Me, here, uh, I live in uh, East Java, one of the big provinces in, in Indonesia. In East Java, at least, uh, there are five major local languages, Javanese as the biggest one, and it is uh, followed by Maduris, Maduris is the is the local language local language from Madura Island in East Java. I should uh, quote uh, the statement from Jean Boudirat. He he stated that the real monopoly is never that a technical means, but of speech. On the other words, that speech can be that hegemonic, not only because of the technical means. And globalization, if you uh, global language, makes people are lazy to learn other languages, particularly regional or local languages. And due to globalization effect, the language status Okay, it arises the terms of superior and inferior languages. And also it coins the terms of super languages or sub languages. It is supported by uh, the statement from uh, Habermas, language is also a medium of domination and power. If you want to hold the world, hold the power, uh, hold the language. Hence, the local languages will be shifted and dead because of the expansion of the global languages in the end. This is the background how I will introduce this uh, uh, this paper. I have two critical questions to consider here. The first is how does global language dominate the local language. And then the second one is, how does local language shift and die? Let me repeat. The, the second a critical question is, how does uh, local language shift and die? We come to the, dis the discussions. To answer question number one about how global language uh, dominate the local languages we need to uh, have some uh, criteria or definition on global language a language achieve a genuinely global status when it develops a special role that is recognized in every country so a language can be a global language when it achieve a genuinely global status. There are uh, some rules to be a global language that I can discuss in detail later. The rules are as the official language of a country and as a priority in a country's foreign language teaching, even though this language has no official status. I quote it from David Crystal in English as a global language 2003. And in this case, English language is one of the perfect examples to illustrate and be labeled as a global language from the rules. It is not only worldwide spoken English, it is not only worldwide spoken, but also plays the role as the global language. Now, let's talk about the two roles of global language. Firstly, to be called global language, it must play the role as an official language. 
The role of an official language is today best illustrated by English language, which now has some kinds of special status in over 70 countries, such as Ghana, Nigeria, India, Singapore, and Vanuatu. The role of English as, of, uh, as, of, uh, as an official language. And then and the second role is a language can be a, lo uh, a global language if they can be made a priority in a country's foreign language teaching, even though this language has no official status. English is now the language mostly, most widely taught as a foreign language in over 100 countries, such as China, Russia, Germany, Spain, Egypt, Indonesia, and Brazil. Uh, the example of the countries that make English become the first priority to be taught in uh, language teaching. And again, English language has those roles, the roles to be an official language and the role to be a priority in, in, in language teaching. And then there are several factors supporting why English could be a global language. At least I will issue three factors. The first factor is historical factor. English can be a, a global language from the history. It is historically recorded. English start its global movement from America, Asia, and the Antipodes. The first expedition had initiated when English landed in Roanoke Islands in North Carolina and spread to the whole parts of America, Canada, Caribbean islands, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Pacific. This is from the historical point of view or the historical factor why English can be a global language. Now let's go to the step two, the political factor. Language has a strong union with power. In English language context, English becomes the global language because of power intervention. The British Imperium covers one third part of the world and British stations reach one quarter of the population. And it decades the influence of British civilization in almost worldwide and English language become the tool to hold this goal. This is number two, uh, number two factor, political factor. And now let's take a look at the third factor, why English become a global language. It is what we call with cultural factor. Political domination affects cultural supremacy. It is easily detected through the media, international expedition, international security and education. While English culture become that hegemonic in media, all media, international media, has been delivered in English language. International expedition, like a journey on the trip, and international security and security and education. Those three factors why English become global language. The first is because of the historical factor, and the second one is uh, the political factor, and the third one, the cultural factor. What is going to be the impact for linguistic? In this case, I view it from the impact of sociolinguistics, the impact if a global language dominates to a local language. The status as a global language influences English language among the other languages. What are the sociolinguistic impact? English is hegemonic 
it makes the local language become subordinated language and English itself become the superordinated language. Basically, a language is potential to be shifted and die. The global language makes it worse. This is the sociological, uh, the sociological impact. Exactly. If a global language dominates or influence that much to the local language, it can make a local language shift and die. Now, let's take a look at one of the impact of the domination local language shift the local language will be shifted well now take a look at the definition of language shift language shift is the term used in social linguistic to refer to the gradual or sudden move from the use of one language to another either by an individual or by a group david crystal a dictionary of linguistic and phonetics well the very uh, genuine example for this one is I am Madris, I speak Madura language or Madris language, and I think my local language, Madris language, are on the way to be shifted. This is uh, uh, due to the uh, impact of the global language, in this case is English. And Stephanie Janade et al in the language files at that language shift is caused by an equal prestige between the indigenous language and the new language. The native speakers feel inferior. They consider their own language, the local language, a substratum language working under the superstratum one. This phenomena is simply identified in pidgin languages. And then talking about language shift, when the local language shift takes place, the language community collectively possesses a new language shift in gradual ways. Some factors affecting language shift. The first factor why language is shifted is the factors of bilingualism or multilingualism. Me, for example, and in everyday life, I could speak more than one language. In my office, I speak English with my colleagues. With my students, I speak English. And I can also bilingualism by speaking Indonesian with my coworkers. And when I come home, I speak my local language, Madurais. And this is one of the factors why Maduris, for example, or even Javanese, for example, could be shifted because the bilingualism or multilingualism. And religion can be one of the factors of the language shift. People converse their religions and then they move to the major countries or the major religion where the, where the religion dwells it can cause the language shift. And of course, culture. Culture, when you feel that you are quite inferior with your own culture, not really superior to the other culture, it is also one of the uh, factors of the language shift. Education, education, English, France, Spain, our own Chinese, for example, you know this example, are thought in many countries nowadays as the one language teaching and one language teaching materials. And also economy. The economic domination will make the language shift and also the natural disaster as the last factor of language shift. And now, in global context, the most hegemonic factor in language shifting is what we call here 
as straight language phenomena. Let me repeat that in global context, and the most hegemonic factor of the language shifting is at straight language phenomena. What is at straight language phenomena? This phenomena indicates a situation where two languages or more are about to influence to each other since they think they are in similar degree of prestige and power. They are in similar degree of power and that are associated with this, their speakers or user. In a very genuine example, for example, most Indonesian feel inferior when, we, when they talk with uh, uh, native speakers. They think that they, uh, their language does not give any uh, superior influence to the, to the language. And also when Maghrish people, my own language, my local language, talks with Javanese, for example, or talks with Indonesian or Malay languages, I sometimes feel that kind of inferior. This is because of the, what we call here, the abstract language phenomenon. And in abstract language case, there will be a language community that they think their language is superior and more hegemonic, and it is called super straight language. Super straight language is the language that considered to be superior over the other languages. On the other hand, the losing language, the language that is lost, will be substrate language and suffer from what we call here is inferiority complex. Hence, the substrate language will comfortably or offertly do borrowing in phonology and morphology patterns from the uh, superstrate languages. This is also one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the process of uh, a new word from uh, borrowing. Who borrow who? Of course, the sub language borrows some phonological or morphological patterns from the super straight language. This is the factors in, uh, from the uh, sociolinguistic perspective. And then, as soon as the language shift, the local language will die. It is what we call with language death. It is one. Of, uh, it is also one of the phenomena in sociolinguistics, uh, uh, in sociolinguistic study. After the language shift, in the end, the language will be dead. The language death. A language is believed to be dead when no one speaks it anymore. David Crystal coins the process of language death. The first, the language speaker suffers from physical threat. And then the second cause is the cultural factor. Firstly, if a language speaker is sick and finally dead, it can cause to the existence of the language. The language will not be exist any longer when all the speakers is dead. And then secondly, the cultural assimilation of substrate and superstrate language can cause cultural hegemony. Let me repeat, the second factor of the language death is cultural assimilation. When substrate and superstrate languages are in the, they are assimilated. And of course, the superstrate one will win this competition and make the substrate language death. I quoted from David Crystal on the language death 2003. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the classification, the language death classification. The first is viable, meaning that in this case, language have population bases that are sufficiently large and thriving to meet that no threat to long-term survival is likely. This is the first stage or the first classification of the language death. And then the second one is viable but small. 
a language languages have more than 1000 speakers and are spoken in communities that are isolated or with a strong internal organization and aware of the way of the way their language is marker of identity and endangered languages the next classification or the next stage is endangered endangered classification the languages are spoken by enough people to make survival a possibility but only in favorable circumstances and with a growth in community support and the next classification or the next stage is nearly extinct languages are thought to be beyond the possibility of survival usually because they are spoken by just a few elderly people and then the last stage the language become extinct where the less fluent speaker has died and there is no sign of any revival i quote it from david crystal in language death 2003 the classification of language death what can be done to avoid the language shift naturally and the language death i want to propose uh, five things that we can be done the first is Let's make some language maintenance, local language maintenance. This is also the terms of uh, social linguistics. It refers to the degree to which people continue to use a language once they are part of community in which another language has a dominant position. We should maintain our language, especially the local language. And of course, the second one, something that we can do is we should teach the language teach language from the very early age local language for example madras language i am Ma i speak madras language i must teach i must introduce my local language in order not to be shift and dead to the very early kids and i and the local government should make its official program to teach the local language in, in every school of the local school, of course. And then the, the third thing that we can do is use the language. Literature is one of the human literary forms that enables language as the media. Use the language in uh, literary, for example, uh, make language in uh, in a poem form, in drama, for example, or in a prose, in literary work. And the number four is cultural awareness. Encourage the speakers to have a cultural pride. If we can encourage the speaker, the native speakers, Japanese in Indonesian context or Madras in Indonesian context, to have a cultural pride. This is also uh, one of the many things that we can do to, to avoid the language shift and language death. And then the media support, of course. It is cultural agent. Media is a cultural agent to create language image. Media can create a language image and ma media can also present the language reality. So those five things that we can be done to maintain languages. I think that's it for the presentation. Thank you very much. Let's get back to the uh, to the host or to the moderator. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your presentation. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I thought that I'm not audible. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your beautiful presentation. And uh, uh, today, uh, after the session, we have a Q and A. So on that time, we will see you again. Now it's time to move forward for our the next uh, speaker, Dr. Abdul Ghafur, sir. So I would like to introduce our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Abdul Ghafur. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. 
Ah, uh, hello everyone. How are you, sir? How are you? Okay, I'm fine. Good. Thank you. Sir, you have to introduce yourself. Because <laughs> I saw that till now you are the so youngest speaker of uh, for IGP. <laughs> not, the youngest, so young, youngest actually. professor. Uh, <laughs> I am 37 right now. Not so young. Oh, but, <laughs> but, you, but you looks like young, sir. Yeah, because I have no uh, mustache and beard, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir, uh, stage is yours. Okay. Okay, so I take my turn. Yeah, you take my your turn, and okay, you have to uh, share your screen. Okay, sure. Let me share first. Definitely. Okay, is that okay? Sir, it's still not visible here. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, what about now? No, sir. No? No. Okay, wait a moment. Okay. Is there make it full okay. screen and move to the next move to the next yeah, okay sir. Okay sir. Okay. Is it okay? It's okay. okay, let me start. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, um hello? Can you hear my voice? Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Good evening from Indonesia. Um, thank you very much for this great opportunity given. I am Gafur Marusuki from Indonesia. On this great occasion, I'm going to deliver and explore some ideas, points of view regarding the application of technology enhanced language learning, um, especially the use of learning tools in the EFL context. Before touching on the presentation, I'm going to express first my sincere thanks and appreciation to the IGP committees who create, arrange, and make this virtual conference come true. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my presentation title is that students' perception of applying the technological application in language learning. So um, this is the background of my study. Um, my first major concern is that the concept of independence learning. In Indonesia, this concept has been released and introduced by our Minister of Education and Culture since uh, the 24 January 2020. The main objective of independence learning concept is to explore the greatest potential of our teachers or lecturers and students to innovate and improve the quality of learning independently. Independent here is not only following the bureaucratic process of education, but truly in educational innovation. And the second concern is that um, virtual learning during post, during and post pandemic COVID-19. COVID-19 pandemic has changed our life in many aspects. One of them is the impact on education. The presence of COVID-19 hinders teaching and learning activities, which are usually carried out in a direct meeting or face-to-face. -face. Nevertheless, this pandemic can accelerate the learning system is done remotely by utilizing technology. 
the COVID-19 became a significant catalyst for spur education, such as encouraging more use of technology in virtual learning activities. However, there are significant challenges in, implement in implementing the virtual learning model. One of them is that the teachers or lecturers are not accustomed to using learning systems that are entirely online. Difficulties arise because they haven't used equipment for virtual learning models. Therefore, additional support and mentoring are needed to adapt to this new learning model. Well, educational technology on ELT. In general, technology can be defined as a set of knowledge, skills, and technique which humans change, transform, and use to create tools, machines, products, and services that meet our needs and desires. In this presentation, uh, I focus on discussing technology on ELT context. There are some reasons why it is really important. Um, number one is that uh, students are engaging with technology constantly outside of the classroom. Students like to be interactive and learning through technology has now become a part of their lifestyle. Number two, technology helps make teaching and learning more meaningful and fun. Students are also collaborate with their classmates through technological application. Number three, assessing students' performance can be done instantly with technology. Beyond seeing test scores in real time, teachers or lecturers can better track and understand students' grasp of the subject. Number four, students know technology better than most adults. It has uh, become the easiest way they learn because it is such an integral part of their lifestyle. Engaging with technology in the classroom has not only helped them learn better, but they also acquire multitasking skills. Number five, um, computers tablets and other forms of technology bring multiple resources for the teachers that's not in the book. They not only keep students engaged with exciting new features and applications, but also have other ways to teach students material. And number six, uh, we do understand that every student's learn differently and technology helps with this gap as well the students know uh, are considered technological learners okay um this is reasons for integrated technology on elt Incorporating technology into the teaching and learning process boosts students' active engagement with learning. It creates a new learning environment to improve class attendance and preparation as well as students' active participation during the class. Many experts have highlighted the reasons for integrated technology in teaching and learning activity, which are first to help students to prepare for their future careers, uh, the second to reach the diversity in learning styles, and the third to give students the chance to interact with their classmates more by encouraging collaboration, and fourth to help the teachers or lecturers to prepare students for the real-world environment. 
So it is clear that the intention of te integrating technology in teaching and learning could lead to better learning, retention, and student satisfaction with the lesson presentation. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, utilizing YouTube as a learning tool, and here I provide eight reasons why YouTube is beneficial to be used as a learning tool. Um, the first one is that it is really easy to integrate. Adding YouTube videos to young learners course is an easy task due to the variety of authoring tools and learning management systems out there. You can see YouTube videos to introduce a topic, explain an online activity, motivate your learners, or simply extend the information conveyed by your learning course. Number two, it can be used to create an online learning community. As you have probably seen for yourself, everyone has a voice in YouTube. Using it as a social learning platform offers you the opportunity to build a strong online learning community where everyone can comment, contribute, and share their opinions and ideas. Number three, it generates and promotes online discussion. Online learning videos are particularly effective facilitators for analysis. After viewing a YouTube videos, you can encourage online discussion by asking your learners or your students to add their personal insights. For example, what did they like about the video? Was there anything they didn't understand? How did the online learning videos relate to their personal experience and feelings? Or you can also ask them to share other YouTube videos references to extend online discussions. As video enhance online learning courses, increase interest and engagement levels by presenting different perspective. Next, uh, number four, it is ideal for mobile learning. Uploading online learning content to YouTube make it available throughout the YouTube network, which means that your learners or students can access it and view it on the go via their smartphones or tablets devices used in mobile learning. It doesn't matter how small the screen is, you can use YouTube as a platform for not only searching online videos resources, but also sharing presentation and inviting your students to take an active part through their commenting. Next, number five, it allows for micro learning. How about short, effective instructional video on YouTube? Using YouTube videos for micro learning ensures that complex procedures and demonstrating of specific skills are delivered in small quantities, which enhances knowledge retention. Furthermore, because YouTube is available on all devices and allows your learners to watch longer online learning videos in short segments, your audience can watch the, the videos whenever they like and take their own time to absorb the information being offered. Six, it encourages the development of not taking skills. Using YouTube videos as a part of your online learning course encourages your audience to develop their not taking skills by viewing, rewinding, and replying 
the YouTube video material until they have fully grasped its essence and key points. You can even create online assignments based on this, for instance, by asking your students to describe in a few words what they have just seen on a video in a specific time frame. Seven, it enhances comprehensions of complex concepts. Certain subjects can be difficult to explain. Using YouTube as a virtual library to support uh, your online learning content by providing your learners with access to its videos allows you to better illustrate complex concepts, procedures, and ideas. Videos are ideal for demonstrating steps and especially in uh, corporate training. Working your audience through a process via a video clip can be truly effective. Visual contexts help learners or students to easily acquire and retain knowledge, as well as develop uh, specific skill sets as demonstration in the most effective way to get a message across. Next, number eight, it allows learners to make their own YouTube videos. Asking your students to be involved in a video production as part of an online group assignment will help them not only ensure that they can use the important information they have learned, but also develop and enhance their visual literacy and creativity. Consider providing them with clear guidelines to know exactly what is expected of them, as well as the necessary tools and resources. You can also use uh, their YouTube videos to encourage feedback exchange among your students, which promotes discussion and boosts knowledge retention. Okay, and next, um, we move to you, Kahoot, yeah, the use of Kahoot, utilizing Kahoot as a learning tool. So number one is YouTube, and the second one is the utilizing of Kahoot. Kahoot can be defined as online game that can test the knowledge of the students on English reading skill, for example. Even though it is uh, a simple free multimedia online media, for both teachers and students, the, the character is limited up to 90, 95 for questions and 64 answers. So uh, this quiz maker media containing various media such as pictures or videos which can be limited for its time to answer the questions um, provided. The application can be accessed through laptops, smartphones, or other uh, medias. Uh, Kahoot allows students uh, to learn using uh, technological devices like computer or smartphone while having fun. The students play as if they were participating in a game show, which allows them to learn in fun, playful, and interactive way building their own knowledge. So uh, here I propose uh, some steps how to use uh, you Kahoot in the classroom. The first one is warm up the class with a game and then assess students' knowledge before the start of a unit or materials and then uh, promote a students' motivation by encouraging them and then increase students' engagement in the process of teaching and learning, and then assess students' understanding and review the material. Uh, next, uh, you, the utilizing video recording as a learning tool. By using a recorded video presentation, it is an alternative assessment 
uh, to provide an autonomous learning environment in which learners can practice speaking and check their performance to monitor their learning progress. Furthermore, the students can also express uh, their opinions towards their fellow friends as they are in one community. There is a need to support each other to grow together. It could be in terms of um, suggestions, feedback, or even correction on what they have done. To maintain the same enthusiasm in the classroom as one community, there should be trust built in the community. So everyone will take responsibility in order to contribute to the success of the whole community. Um, the use of video recording could also give benefit for the students in expanding their vocabularies and word choices within a three minutes recorded video, for example. They were given a chance to prepare for their recorded video in several days. They have to practice speaking in English before they recorded their three minutes speaking in front of the camera. In their reflective journal, they say that they enjoy the learning process because they could learn to speak in a more effective way since they needed to decide only to say the necessary information related to their topics without direct supervision from the teachers or lecturers. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, since this is uh, my result, so um, I have research uh, methodology. Uh, this research employs a qualitative survey. Participation in this study was limited to university students who in, enroll in general English subject using technology uh, in this uh, matter, YouTube, Kahoot, and video recording. The completed response was obtained from 50 students from three different classes. The survey used questionnaire that consisted of uh, 15 questions to elicit information on the instructional design of using technology and its advantage in developing students' language skills. Okay, so um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is uh, the, the findings or research results. Um, the findings in this study indicate that the use of technology in EFL learning offers the benefit to improve students' language learning experience with practicing the language in real-life context. It is also indicates that the instructional design of employing a single piece of technology as an in instructional language teaching and learning tool has a great impact on students' engagement with learning, with language learning. The result of the study indicates that empowering social media like YouTube and create a discussion using controversial statements help students to participate in the discussion. The result also shows that the students are well participated in the describing any event or videos posting on YouTube by the lecturer. Besides the findings from using Kahoot as digital games and video recording help students improving their engagement with EFL learning that resulted in enhancing their language skills. Such empowering provides the study claim that digital games help them to enrich their vocabulary. Thus, they also claim that using digital video recording helps them to portray correct their pronunciation, intonation, and word stress. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so this is my conclusion. Technology in education can be used 
for different purposes. It can be used as a tutor, as a teaching tool, and as a learning tool. This study has focused on integrating technology as teaching and learning tools, in this case, uh, YouTube, Kahoot, and video recording. The students possess positive response towards uh, the utilizing of technology in EFL learning because it offers um, benefits to improve students' language learning experience concerning practicing the language in a real life context. They have acquired new English words and phrases and develop their language skills simultaneously. Thank you very much. Back to the moderator. Thank you, sir, for giving your valuable insight and uh, on technology and how to use and in, increase our skill on by using the technology. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving your marvelous and rich presentation. Uh, it is time to move our next speaker. Our next speaker is a lecturer in Straight Islamic Institute of Sukar, Sukarta, uh, Indonesia. She graduated from Professor Dr. Maurice Topo University, Jakarta, Indonesia, with bachelor degree majoring in medicine in 2009, and continued pursuing her Master's of Science in Medicine in 2012. Uh, his interest study and research series is human research management, business process improvement, and thinking. Please give a warm welcome to our Kutu Vidi Viswani, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Good, uh, good evening, Miss. Hello, good evening, everyone. Ma yep. Ma'am, your is voice is not clear. Uh, is it my voice is clear? Is it clear enough, my voice? Yes, ma'am. No, it's clear. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the stage is, uh, is uh, mine. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. So my name is Putu Widiswari. I am a junior lecturer in State Islamic University, uh, State Islamic Institute of Surakarta, IAN Surakarta. And uh, my interest study and research area are human resource uh, management, business process improvement, and system design and system thinking. So I will, uh, before I start my presentation uh, tonight, I will say thank you to Institute of Global Professionals that already affiliated with several higher education institutions in Indonesia that uh, give me the opportunity to to share uh, the topic on this uh, occasion. And also thanks for the opportunity for me uh, as a representation for my institution to sharing the idea about uh, gender and uh, ICT. So on this occasion, I will present, I will try to share my uh, material Okay, so I will start to to uh, present my material. I will present about bridging the gender divide, how digitalization can advance women socioeconomically. Uh, information communication and technology, or ICT. Uh, ICT defines our era. The first one is numerous and of innovations. As we can see now, uh, nowadays there are a lot of innovations that uh, surrounded uh, to, to our uh, individual life, group life, and organization life, or institution life. And ICT defines also ever, uh, ever shrinking media. A lot of media uh, surround us now, and also as well alternative energies and change the way we live uh, individually. A group or, uh, or in organization or institution. 
So ICT is essential. Hello? Sorry. Oops. So, try to share my screen. Okay. Okay. So, sorry for uh, uh, uncomfortable. Sorry, I'll try to uh, start again my share screen. Ma'am, you already shared your screen. Where is it? Wait a minute, I'll try my best to share screen again. Why it doesn't appear? <laughs> so sorry for uh, inconvenience. I'll try my best to share screen again. Yep. Follow the system like in trial. Why it doesn't appear? <laughs> no. Uh, just uh, click on share, then again share screen, then again share screen, then your entire screen, then share. Okay, I'll try. But previously, it, 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 does it appear the the screen? <laughs> yeah. Or it doesn't appear from the from the beginning, or it just uh, happen happen it now? <laughs> no, I, I, everything was good. Okay, okay, I'll try to share again. Everything is good. So, uh, it did appear in the beginning. So, let me check. Okay, I'll try my best. And then I'll go to my power. Is it appear? No. Okay, is yeah, it fine? No, no, no. Yeah, is it fine? Move to the next slide. No? Yeah, it's okay. 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 So, um, Okay, so so uh, sorry for the inconvenience. So uh, the, the second one, ICT, information communication and technology is essential because ICT uh, increase the productivity, individual, group, and organization, and also create new entrepreneurial ventures. Uh, and the last one is access a uh, new income. Uh, the, term, the last one, ICT is an engine for economic growth. So why information communication and technology can develop economic advancement and also uh, at the time uh, ICT can stimulate broader, broader economic growth. Now uh, in this occasion I will not talk about gender uh, deeply, I will not uh, discuss about gender theory, gender definitions, gender uh, issues uh, broadly. So I will I just present gender equality phenomenon nowadays. So now less of uh, inequality in men's and women's employment and education benefit. Uh, it will be f uh, form the lower child mortality because uh, if if, if uh, quality uh, gender quality between men and women uh, happen. Or, or execute in in our community, it can be decrease uh, the child mortality because uh, uh, the the knowledge of the for uh, of the women will increase, and they will uh, they will uh, realize that uh, they will realize about health, education, and and the other the other things. Second one, 
woman's ability to access income by herself, uh, access technology by herself, and uh, she pay, she get paid work improves uh, will improve their children's welfare more than men's access to similar resources. Uh, and then uh, mother's social and economic status is considered as the best indicator of whether their children will complete their education and enjoy help uh, and also poverty free. Uh, there are some uh, cases in our community in Indonesia uh, which, uh, in which children whose mothers enjoy higher earning potential and education go on to complete more education than children whose mothers have less schooling. I will not, uh, in this occasion, I, uh, I, I'm not going to uh, d describe or um, have, a, have a bad have a bad credit to to um, women uh, have not uh, working or have not an, uh, have not an official working in this uh, in the uh, public or private companies or institution. So the, it, it just a uh, possibility that uh, children whose mother enjoy higher earning potential and education will more uh, have less schooling than uh, the other side. And women with higher earning potential and education tend to vaccinate their children. Okay, so women with the uh, good and high education, uh, good education will uh, realize that vaccinate issues, health issues is very important for their children. And the last one is increase of household household income will boost in children nutrition and survival. Uh, uh, it, it, it talking about health again, so uh, the mindset of the women will be uh, very broadly uh, when they're talking about uh, health, health issues for their children. And then uh, why ICT and gen uh, gender divide? This is particularly regarding to 17 uh, SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. So let me, uh, let me see the opportunity. Uh, why ICT and gender divide? So if we talk about ICT and gender, uh, this issue will enter the global market or global challenge. It will be boosting skills with digital knowledges and participation in the workforce. So the uh, the, the three of uh, three of these uh, issues will become the opportunity when we talk about ICT and gender divide. And how about the capacity and understanding? So I think women have to access uh, their basic needs. They have to enhance the use of enabling uh, technology and uh, she have she has to enable environment for sustainable investment now if we talk about women why women social economic advancement uh, become a, a, a matters become a problems uh, if we talk about lower child mortality uh, and uh, the first one is uh, lower child lower child mortality Less of, uh, like I said before, women's ability to access income, technology, and paid work improve their uh, children's welfare. Also, the lower child mortality level. And then, why why women, uh, as the role uh, as a mother or as a, uh, a wife, uh, talking about gender equality and empower women, gender equality and mainstreaming, and then there are data gathering and tracking and gender dashboard. So regularly, uh, it will be collect and disseminate ICT indicators related to individuals assessing and using ICTs like mobile phone, smartphone, internet, ICT skills, other other ICT skills, programming or developing uh, software. And then, uh, if we talk about encourages gender balance in decision making, that uh, and. A network of women is encourages gender balance in decision making. But so, men and women have a same uh, same opportunity to make a decision making, uh, like uh, involved in panels, statutory committees, and working in study groups, uh, join uh, in the big or largest committees, or uh, maybe uh, join in unit uh, workforce in the unit, and women in standardiz standardization expert group. Uh, they they have to promoting gender equality for delegates like attending meeting. So women and men have to uh, have a same opportunity to attending meetings and conference as a speaker or as a participant. Women participation and representation in all unit and work team, and then uh, they have to uh, 
make uh, accountability framework to systematically revitalize, capture, monitor, and measure performance on mainstreaming gender perspective into the work. They have to encourage study and research based in ICTs for social issues and problems. They have to participation and representation of women in several meetings and conferences also in ICT issues. And there, there, there have to be a code of conduct to prevent harassment, including sexual harassment regarding to gender equality. When we, when women uh, join in the largest communities or uh, uh, in the workforce institution, and they have the commitment to enabling uh, events at which if everyone, women and men, can participate in an inclusive, respectful, safety, everyone feels comfortable and can deliver their best work. And uh, what, why, what exactly the barriers that contributed to the technology and gender divide? So in Indonesia, Indonesia is a developing country. Women in here do not receive the basic education and training. Uh, they not ready technology adopters, and they only seen only as a users or receivers of technology, rather than as innovators in technology design and development. So this issue is uh, keep 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 happen until now. So women only as a users and a receivers of ICT. Uh, rather than uh, we as an innovators in technology design and development. And then uh, if we talk about women and their roles, the domestic course and multiple roles as a caregivers, mom, mother, as well as economic actors, I mean they have a little free time to explore and experiment with new technologies or ICT. And also uh, we are, or women, are constrained by social norms. In Indonesia, Social norms is very uh, uh, still become a, uh, 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 a problem for the women that confer control over much technology. Technology is all, only for a man. So this issue is talking about social norms for every man. And uh, the other barriers is uh, time, po time poverty. Uh, women uh, with their roles, uh, we have a little free time burdening of household and family responsibilities, but we have alternative to start the small business that support by ICT, uh, actually. That's why uh, my topic, my, my, uh, um, my sharing discussion uh, in, on this occasion is talking about bridging the gender and ICT to develop the uh, economic, socio-economically. So, even though we have a little free time, a uh, burden of our roles uh, in the and family responsibility, but we can uh, have an opportunity to alternate for start the small business as an entrepreneur. And then uh, women lack the means to use, rent, purchase, establish a new technology that could help them advance economically. Uh, and also involving women in the technology development can set up a positive chain reaction that enables women to use the technology to enhance their economic activity by improving their productivity in current activity. So I think women have to allow to take advantage of other income to generating opportunity. As I said before, uh, there are a lot of opportunity to start the small business and, uh, as an entrepreneur to develop the socio-economically for the women. To, uh, uh, to survive independently. And then also women have more access to income and other resources as well as the skills and self-confidence to advocate for themselves. And women can use ICT in ways uh, that confer broad social benefits such as better health, uh, better health access, education access for their children by improving their economic condition of their families and communities. And so, uh, what what can we do now, uh, as an academician, as a lecturer? What kind of uh, empirical study or what kind of research area that we can cover uh, regarding to this ICT and gender issues? So the next action is uh, actually we have to know what problems do women face that could be that could be solved by technology. So how far ICT information communication and technology can uh, backup can solve the problems that uh, women face nowadays. And then what, what exactly barriers, including social norms, have prevented women from previously accessing a, a technology ICT solution? And how, my, how might those barriers, as I said before, as I mentioned before, all the barriers can be addressed. 
and then how can women be involved in technology designed to ensure their needs are met as i said before women is not only as a user but we can be a innovator to uh, keep in touch with ict and can a feedback mechanism be put in place to monitor experience in the field and rely on methods for the technology and also what linkage are needed to support the market for the goods and service women produce technology uh, this is particularly uh, with, if we talk about women entrepreneurship or start uh, start up business start small business and what kind of knowledge exactly knowledge and training that uh, uh, become a benefit for the women and community members to sustain use of technology and what will it take to bring the product to market and make it economically sustainable so actually uh, how far ict information communication and technology can uh, bring the product to market and make it economically sustainable and which partner will be essential to ensure its distribution to women and the last one is what market traces is needed to increase women's uses of technology so i think all of this action uh, be uh, become our uh, issues to uh, to have another, maybe another uh, research, uh, can be an, another research or uh, future research to to discuss about uh, ICT and gender issues. So I think uh, there will, there still will be a lot of uh, several areas that can be covered uh, by, by doing some research about uh, ICT and gender. I think that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Uh, I'll give it back to the moderator. Okay, good night, everyone. Thanks of, of your Honorable Shrika for giving your valuable time and uh, share your knowledge with us. Thank you, sir and ma'am. Uh, congratulations, uh, sorry, dear audience. Today's webinar is so informative and impo important for our students and teachers because it's directly and indirectly relatable to our education and professional life. I am thank uh, I expect that this webinar will be helpful for you all and thank you for attending today's session. Please leave a review in our page and if you love No, this we can increase. No, sir, and ma'am. I'll just put, uh, I'll just pin the comment, some question into your screen. Just read the question and uh, answer that. Uh, which fit with that question? So far, there's no raising the questions.
so the question is particularly for uh, 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 speakers or all the speakers can answer uh, the question in anyone can answer or if, if you want then everyone can answer but first of all read out, read out the question and if uh, do that necessary which uh, maybe any can answer in the relevant field okay so who will be the first for answering the questions Okay, uh, hello? Yes, sir. Maybe your internet connection is so weak. There is only one question show up on the screen. In what ways hello? you can enrich the research industry? Yeah. May I answer some questions? Yeah, definitely, sir, definitely. Okay, okay. Um, I have seen uh, most of the questions are related to um, research. The, the weaknesses of uh, using um, sub, some application like YouTube and uh, Kahoot. Mm -hmm. um, YouTube needs, YouTube and Kahoot needs an internet network. So um, people will look for Wi-Fi or mobile data to access it. And the second is YouTube. Uh, the validity of video sources from YouTube is not always guaranteed because uh, many YouTubers do not give the sources of the information of the videos. Um, that's first. And some, some also people asking about um, the research questions of my research so uh, i have two research questions the first one is um, what are the students perception of applying technological application in language learning and the second one what are the effect of applying technological application in language learning so that's that i can answer so far thank you well, let me answer the question from Ferus Akbarov. He asked me, do you support the idea of Lingua Franca internationally? Uh, are you really against the promotion of global language? Well, sir, Ferus Akbarov, uh, as a matter of fact, there are so many positive points or advantages of global language. In this case, I just uh, want to describe the threat, its threat. It is negative point. It is a negative impact to the local language. I, I don't uh, really in the position to fight against it. Global language or international lingua franca, of course, it supports us to have, you know, uh, uh, to communicate to each other in in one then in one understand understandable language. No, I, I don't fight against it. I just, uh, you know, uh, have the presentation, the dark side of global uh, languages to local language. That's it, sir, for uh, Fairus Akbarov. Thank you for the questions. Sir, this is for our Dr. Abdul Gopur. Okay, I'll uh, be set to give an online or something. Okay. Hello? Yes, hello. Okay, okay. Um the question is, uh, beside the given online platform for learning, what other online resources the teachers could use? Um, I think the, the, 
the most the most e- the easiest uh, application and low budget and also uh, need a very very small uh, connection internet connection is using WhatsApp WhatsApp application we can use WhatsApp in teaching and learning sharing uh, materials and also chatting or explaining uh, materials. Hello, this question is for um, Dr. Mulayadi, sir. Okay, this is from Dahlia Polinta. How did the non-native English-speaking country like Indonesia was able to embrace English without forgetting their own language and culture until today? Well, again, ma'am, let me remind you that in this case, uh, in this presentation, I talk about uh, the negative impact of the global language to against local language. But of course, English have contributed, you know, uh, a good impact, especially to to have uh, what we call here, to unite us, to have unite us to have, uh, you know, a, a better communication. So to, uh, you don't have, uh, uh, you don't have to lose your own uh, identity as Indonesian. Indonesian, with its uh, uniqueness, can also learn English. Okay, that's that's uh, I can answer to Ibu Dahlia Polintan Galimba. You know the importance of a global language. Again. As the international lingua franca, okay. That's why uh, United Nations uh, declared there are at least five, you know, international languages instead of English, French, Spain, because uh, some countries to the other countries have have similarities. Uh, Asian, for example, are dominated by English, and some uh, uh, African countries are dominated by French, for example. Uh, Talking about the global languages, uh, as I told you on the slides, that this is very important to, to uh, you know, uh, to make the word in in a single communication, especially uh, to use uh, one of the global languages that is uh, understandable and communicative to each other, Ibudiana. Uh, what the solution to bridging the digital divide among women? Uh, so I think the the practical solutions, uh, the concrete uh, solution is, uh, women have to uh, get involved in every uh, business line, organization line. Uh, women have to uh, join with the committee. Uh, join with the structure, involve with the structure, and uh, give the opportunity uh, for the women to to uh, to confident uh, present something or material in the public public uh, occasion, and then uh, give the opportunity for uh, for women uh, as not only for the user but on uh, but also uh, as the innovator of the ICT technology. Uh, simple, simple case uh, in our institution. Uh, we can start from uh, how how we how high ICT or technology can support our business process and organization. We can uh, women can give the idea uh, how to develop how to improve the business process in our institution. So I think it's that for Ferris Akbar. Thank you. This question is for Dr. Abdul Ghafur said. Okay, uh, can Kahoot will be used for statistical analysis 
Um, I don't suggest you to use Kahoot for statistical analysis. Uh, you may use uh, spe specific application like uh, SPSS because Kahoot is uh, only specified for um, gamification for uh, le learning the language with games. Thank you. Again, sir. Okay. Um, I think I have explained in my PowerPoint presentation um, the some technical application of use Kahoot in language learning. Um, the first is uh, we have to warm up the class with a game and then assess students' knowledge before the start of a unit, then promote the students' motivation, increase the students' engagement. Uh, if you want to know how to use uh, Kahoot detaily, you, you can see from YouTube. There are uh, many explanations about how to use or the step-by-step -step of using Kahoot. This question is for Dr. Maladi, sir. Yes, I think I have answered the question from uh, uh, Verus Akbarov previously that I support this idea and I don't uh, work against the promotion of global language. I just show up the dark side of the global language, especially its, uh, you know, uh, its influence to the local language. Thank you. This question is for Dr. Abdul Ghafur, sir. Uh, how can how can apply technology to those students who are not engaging in, in technology due to lack of digital knowledge and access? Uh, of course, be, of course, before applying uh, the technology, the educational technology, uh, we have the teachers or lectures have to make sure that the students are understanding or they can operate or they can apply the technological tools before applying in, in the classroom. So they, ha they have to uh, teach the students how to operate uh, the technological tools. For you, sir, again. Okay. Um, I am a vlogger. I create various videos and upload onto my video channel. Uh, sometimes they can be costly. Can you suggest any low-cost ways of creating professional educational YouTube videos for students? Um, if you plan to make um, professional video to, to be uploaded in YouTube, of course, it can be costly because you, you need many, many things to make your video becoming more professional. Uh, my suggestion uh, to, to minimize the cost is that you, you have to prepare your content. Um, yeah, you, you, you plan not to use many budget to, to prepare your content. So it is, it is um, not costly to be uploaded on YouTube videos. This question is maybe for me. Can you trust it all webinars to French language? Actually, we are not able to translate any language. Those who converted the language is totally depends by Facebook, not by us. Sorry for that. Facebook can auto translate every in every country's language. So this is not for not in control in our hand. Okay, this is this is uh, the responsible of the committees, I think, from IGP. So this question is for you also. Uh, do you really believe pandemic was a catalyst? Feraz, Ag Feraz Akbaro, uh, Akbaro, yeah, so he is from Uzbekistan. Uh, okay, a uh, catalyst to spread the uh, use of technology in empty classroom, but how about poor communities that before the technological infrastructure? Um, okay, uh, using technology in the classroom, uh, needs um, good 
internet connection so for those place that who doesn't have good connection may use uh, some application like uh, whatsapp uh, telegram uh, they are much uh, cheaper to use and only need um, very low bandwidth or internet connection so uh, you may use uh, whatsapp application or telegram thank you sir for your time and presentation for sure. today's for uh, uh, today's participation i would like to show you something by the help of our uh, one speakers who uh, from three speakers who want to help me uh, from p2 ma'am uh, is too weak and the first sir can help me maybe or i mulaya the sir network is perfect sir mulaya okay. can you hear me sir okay sir uh, just share your screen uh, you already shared your screen just uh, dear participants today we are going to show you how to download how to download your certificate directly stepan okay uh, sir, your network is still close on. No. So, can you hear me clearly? Hello, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sir, go to Google. Sir, go to Google. No. Gafur sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, sir, sir uh, please uh, share your screen again. Uh, Malayadeh sir's network is not stable. Okay. Go to Google. Yeah. Now, okay, sir, browse eduigp e d u i g p. Sorry, e d u i g p dot com. E d d u u igp igp.com okay e do e e d u igp oh e d u igp sir you can you can uh, browse from a uh, uh, text word i mean um yeah google search word e d u i g p dot com okay this one i g p dot com yeah no no i g p dot no not 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 i g p dot com i just shares i just sharing private chat check it here private chat www.eduigp.com
www.eduigp.com So yes, stop your share, maybe. Yeah, I, I have stopped. I have stopped. Sir, we can't, we can't see you, sir. We can't see you. We can't see your screen. It's not visible. Okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> Abdul Ghafur, sir, already. Okay, dear participants, actually, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to our today's speaker, uh, Dr. Mulayadi, sir, Dr. Abdul Ghafur, sir, and our uh the most attraction put to ma'am thank you ma'am and thank you sir for your time for your presentation now i'll uh it's time for certification so what do you have to do participant i will i'll, I'll I just want to try that to show you how to claim certificate from others because in my side it's not internet my internet connection is too poor now so that's why i want to show you from another side but uh, our speaker Abdul Ghafur sir already left by the problem of network. So, what do you have to do? Just browse www.dwgp.com. I also shared the link in comment section. I also pulled in pin into the comment section. You can find the to this topic. What do you have? You have to click the topic, and after that, enroll, and after that, get your certificate. It's totally easy. This is our certificate. And till now, we issued four kinds of certificates. This is the certificate of webinar. This is quiz completion certificate. This one certificate of lifetime membership. Today, from today, we add a new certificate that is for certificate of membership, global professional members. This is our new certificate for global professional members. This is the total certificate format. From today, uh, those who are selected for global professional member, they get they will get the certificate like this. We till now till that we issued four kinds of certificate. Uh, first of all, this one. This is webinar certificate. This one quiz completion certificate. This one for lifetime membership. Already lots of people ask that uh, how, how to get the lifetime membership. Actually, this is for those who already attend more than 60 webinars with us. And this is also for speakers. This certificate is also for speakers uh, uh, for those participants who also who already joined more than 60 webinars with us. This one is the newest certificate with by the support of our total partners total uh, 36 partners from all over the world now uh, this is the certificate of membership thank you so much again i would like to our today's speaker uh, Putu ma'am, uh, Dr. Mulayadi sir, and Dr. Abdul Ghafur sir. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, sir, ma'am, sharing your intelligible knowledge. And uh, especially in QN part, we just cleared up all the concepts which arise in our mind. Thanks for giving your valuable time. Your audience, I think today's webinar will be helpful to you all. I would love to give you all thanks for my deep heart. And please leave a review in our webinar uh, pages and help if the webinar is helpful to you all in educational and professional life. See you all again in the next webinar. Thank you so much.
Stay happy, Thank stay you. safe. Thank you. Thank you. The winner held on tomorrow. At the same topic, multidisciplinary research and teaching part 2. See you tomorrow at uh, the same time. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. See you again. See you again, sir. See you again. Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow evening. <laughs> definitely, sir. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you, sir.